In this video, we will be talking about a recent downtime incident I had with my web app. I develop and maintain an e-commerce solution for restaurants and snack bars, kind of like Shopify, but on a much smaller scale. My application is mainly powered by a Laravel monolithic application and our traffic pattern is pretty predictable. We have around two spikes every day, one around lunch, and the other around dinner time. At the time of the incident, we had an infrastructure that looked a little something like this. Whenever a request came in, we had one application server that would handle all the traffic. And we already had a load balancer in between for easy horizontal scaling. Despite monitoring our system health, which showed a low CPU usage and a low memory usage all across the board, we were caught off guard on a Friday evening when our system suddenly went dark. A Friday evening around 6 p.m. is the busiest time on our platform because to start a weekend ride, people often treat themselves to some takeout. In an attempt to mitigate the problem, I scaled our services horizontally, which was actually kind of easy to do because we already had a load balancer set up. Because of this, we didn't have to bother with any DNS records and we could focus on spinning up our new application servers. Our static assets were already hosted on S3 and being served by CloudFront to the end user. So adding two application servers was actually kind of a breeze. We spun up and provisioned two new servers. We made sure our application was configured. And lastly, we added it to the load balancing pool. An important detail to note was that our first application server did more than just serve the application. We also offer a couple of real-time functionalities for our merchants. For example, when a customer places an order, they get a direct signal in their application that a new order has to be prepared. For this reason, we also had to have a WebSocket server and that WebSocket server lived on our first application server. The WebSocket server was Node.js based and we used Nginx as a reverse proxy to expose it to the internet. This WebSocket server sat behind an Nginx reverse proxy so we could easily handle things like SSL certificates. I initiated a thorough investigation as to why our services went dark that Friday evening. Because otherwise I would definitely lose sleep over it. My first instinct was to log into the application server and check the PHP FPM logs because my gut feeling was telling me that we were hitting some 502 gateway timeout because of a misconfigured PHP FPM pool. To my surprise, however, we were not seeing any errors in the PHP FPM logs. The next thing I did was log into our Nginx Amplify dashboard to take a look at our error rates and Nginx Amplify was in fact reporting a massive spike in 500 type errors. Our application server did not show any type of 502 gateway timeout error, so it made me suspect that Nginx itself on the application server was giving an error. Now there's an important thing to note, when Nginx itself throws an error, you don't get a 502 gateway timeout, instead you get a 500 internal error. After I realized this, I opened up the logs again and started digging for that 500 error. And lo and behold, I found the culprit. The error read, worker connections are not enough while connecting to upstream. I went to the Nginx docs to read up about this parameter, and the default value of this parameter is 512 which was the limit we were hitting. Now, this 512 limit was already being consumed by the many simultaneous WebSocket connections because a WebSocket keeps the connection open for a longer time. So we were effectively already at the 512 limit using just our WebSocket connections. So whenever a new web request came in, our Laravel application didn't even get the chance to respond because Nginx blocked it and didn't accept any new connections. Now, to resolve this issue, I increased the worker connections from 512 to 768, and I also explicitly set the worker processes to auto. Nginx was not configured to increase the worker processes, so after our only process hit those 512 connections, it just stopped accepting any new incoming requests. Now, this will allow Nginx to automatically add new processes depending on your server configuration. After I did those changes, the issue never returned again because Nginx now would automatically scale up or down the amount of processes. And we actually haven't faced a similar issue since. In an effort to reduce our monthly spend, I scaled our services down again so we are optimally using our application servers. Now, here are a couple of things I learned when facing this situation. Number one, the separations of concern. Had we put our WebSocket server on another machine, we would have still had the issue, but only on the WebSocket server and thus reducing the impact to only the real-time communication of our system. 
Lesson number two is the 502 error versus the 500 error. When you have a load balancing setup and one of your application servers responds with a 500 error, your load balancer will actually respond with a 502 gateway timeout. So keep that in mind when you're faced with a similar situation. Lesson number three, have a load balancer configured before you actually need one. When we faced our downtime, the thing that helped us minimize the impact was to already have a load balancer configured. This way we didn't have to change any DNS settings and we could just add a new application server to the pool. And our final and fourth lesson is to tweak the default Nginx parameters. Nginx definitely ships with sensible defaults, but as your web app scales, you may find yourself in a situation where you've outgrown those defaults. So spend some time investigating your default setup and tweak the parameters to your specific needs. Learn from my mistakes. You don't want to be doing this when you are facing downtime. And this actually concludes the video. I hope you learned a thing or two and I will see you in the next one. Bye.